This is a new epoxy resin to me, Hippie Crafter, and they have their mica powders as well, so let's put them to a test today. Hi everybody, it's Jannie here for Moon Cusser Art. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I try to share lots of tips along the way in my videos, and today I'm excited because I just got a kit from Hippie Crafter. They sent me some of their epoxy resin. I love their label. I guess I'm an old hipster. And they include with the package, it has a really nice guide to using their product, very thorough, so that's really nice of them. And they also included a 24-pack of their mica powders. So if you guys have watched me before, you know I'm weird. I like to make my samples. And I used one of my molds that created these little disc shapes because it kind of keeps them a little bit smaller for me. And then I go about labeling them all. Pretty color. They're Robin's Egg Blue. Very nice sparkle to that. Love those. Anyway, so I thought that it's been a little bit of a while since I did one of my geodes. I'm going to be doing a geode with their products. And I've already selected my base color. So, of course, I'm going to be using their epoxy resin to complete the task. Here's also where they included a nice little thing about their mica powder. So very helpful information. If you're new to working with resin, they really thought it through and gave everybody some nice guidelines. So here are their colors. You can see they've got a lot of sparkle to them. Just really nice, pretty colors. So here are the colors we're going to be working with today. I have their phthalo blue. That's that one. So now it's in a shadow, so let's try not to make shadows. I'll be using their Silk White. I'll also be using their Graphite. Let's get in close to look at that Graphite, because this has really got a lot of sparkle to it. Um, trying to catch it on the camera. It's so hard to get all that bling. And the last one I'll be using is... They're sea green. Isn't that pretty? Again, all nice sparkly mica powders. I'm going to pull out some of my other pigments to go along with it because when I like to do my geodes, I like to have uh, varying types of pigments, transparents, glitter, additives. It gets funky. So let's get started. I'm going to prep my panel. This is a, or no, this one is a uh, clayboard panel. I've already spray painted it white and I'll be working with clean white sides. So I'll be building a tape dam and getting this all prepped up. And once that's all set, I'll come back and we'll start putting everything down. All right, real quick, I just use a pencil and I'm doing a really rough draft of lines. Just gives me an idea of how to map out my geode. I'm going to be using some acrylic paint. It's going to dry really quickly and that's exactly what I need. And just laying out that paint, just any old brush, filling in those lines and we're all set. All right, so I finished painting on the blue ring. This is where I'm going to be placing some glitter. So I wanted that as a background. And now I'm going to start filling in these areas. You can see there's a, a ridge here, a clear ridge. And that's because I used Elmer's glue wall. I loaded it into this syringe. Very easy to do. And then I would just use the syringe to draw out my glue lines. And you can see, there it is. It dries clear, so it will be enough of a border that it will stop my resin from going beyond those areas, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I want to try to contain that blue. 
So let's get going. I'm going to batch up the blue mica powder and we'll start filling that in. And I also, you can see here, my edges are all taped off and prepped for clean sides. I'm going to add the tape dam, like here's a spot that the blue will run over the edge. So I'm going to put a tape dam here. I don't have to worry about going all around the sides because I'll just get that one stuck on there and then I'll be able to remove it. So just a couple of little places where the blue is going to go at the edges. And otherwise, we are going to rock this thing now. All right, I've batched up my resin. This again, it's the Hippie Crafter. And this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So I like to, you know, mark my equal measurements on my cup. I always start by pouring the hardener in first because it's thinner. It's the thinner of the two parts and thinner will scrape off easier from the sides of your cup than the resin will. The resin is thicker so I pour in my hardener. Again equal amounts that I've measured out already marked on my container. This um, I get my amounts by using water. So I use water to measure four fluid ounces and that's what I've filled two, two ounces. Well it's not two ounces of the hardener because, again, you can't weigh hardener and resin weigh different. So you have to get your equal amounts by volume. So that's what I've got there on the side of my cup. I can't dip my cup too much or I'll pour my resin out. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to use the Fallow Blue Mica Powder from Hippie Crafter. Tap down my mica. So here it is in the container, nice little sparkly blue, pretty, matches my gloves. And I reuse my popsicle stick, so now it's sealed with resin, so I don't have to worry about, you know, air bubbles or anything like that. And again, this is four ounces that I've come up with, so I'm going to go heavy-handed with my mica. And we'll see how that looks in there. So let's incorporate this in. I did my tests with this and I found that it incorporated quite easily into the resin. Sometimes you'll find a mica powder that um, does not mix in well and you'll want to do uh, small amounts so that you can make sure that you blend it in well. And you can also, what I like to do is I like to, um, if it's one that's really hard to incorporate, I'll actually take the mica powder and make a paste with it using 99% isopropyl alcohol. And that will create a paste um, that will just stir right in. You don't have to worry about having any clumping. So you can see there's some some spots on the sides of the cup. So those are the things I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna scrape my container, gonna mix it through. And this I mixed it for three minutes when I made my batch of resin up. So I'm just gonna stir this for a little bit longer Really pretty color. Look at that. Who doesn't like blue? Again, I want to make sure I don't have any powder residue on the sides of my cup. So I'm taking my time, working those in. Just like that. And now, as you can see, when I stir... I'm not seeing any clumps, and that's the good news. All right, so let's see. I want it to be a little bit more intense. I don't want to see my whiteboard through this. Mm, what to do? I'm just going to add a little bit more. 
going to sprinkle it on the surface a little bit so that I'm not putting one big clump in there. And that'll make it easier to blend in because it's more dispersed across the surface. That's better. Okay. Close up my container. Set that aside and finish blending this. And just take your time. It's really important to mix your pigments in carefully. I've had it happen where all of a sudden, you know, it, when it's a powder pigment, all of a sudden a big powder puff will be stuck in there and it'll drop onto your canvas and then you got to start trying to fish it out and it breaks up more and blah, blah, blah. So this is good. This is blending in very nicely. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, because I'm going to be filling in this area here with this blue, and I'm going to use, these are just little mouthwash cups. It's a paper cup. There's absolutely no wax on this cup. You don't want wax because if your resin is warm, it's going to melt the wax and then it's going to be part of your resin. So just a paper cup and I'm going to pinch and make a little pouring spout. So if you tried to pour it out of this container, it would go all over the place. By using a little paper cup, you can make these little spouts and you can really control it. So let me uh, get my mask on and we'll start pouring. All right, let's check out that control using that pinch pour from that paper cup. It works great. Gets into all the little thin spots on the lines and fills everything out nicely. It's got a really nice rich color. The blue looks fantastic. It's got a good shimmer to it and I don't have any clumping. So it mixed in really nicely and goes right up to the edges. After about two hours, I'm going to start adding some glass beads. I got these from Michael's. They're um, just a really nice clear glass bead and they're not sharp at all. So I really like them a lot. They have a good transparency. I like to let the resin set up just a little bit to get it sticky and then I'll start dropping those beads on. I have batched up one ounce Again, one-to-one -one ratio by volume of the resin, and I have tinted it with the Sea Green from Hippie Crafter. I have some beads from Michaels. These are, what are they? So there it is, Mint Luster Crystal Quartz Stone. So it's mint because it's been colorized. And it comes on these strings like that. So I have already separated out some of these crystals. You can see they have a little bit of an iridescent action going on there. They're really pretty. And I also lined them all up so that the hole that they drill for the stringing is all on the one end. So that I'm sure to put that end into the resin. I kept the smaller ones here on the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking the resin and putting it into these little cups from this silicone mold. This mold I got from Amazon. I dump my leftover resin into these little cups and figure out things to do with it at another time. So I'm going to pour some of this resin into these cups and I'm going to let that set up. And it's got to get thicker because if I start placing these stones into the resin now. It's so thin and slippery in that silicone, they'll just slide and fall over and go crazy ways. And I don't want that. So I'm gonna pour it in there, give it about an hour, maybe even two hours, and then I'll place the crystals. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. I placed all the crystals in and now they're just gonna cure overnight. 
I just let my popsicle sticks drop on my plastic tabletop and then they peel right off and they're good to stir again. But, so here are my little crystals that I did with the sea green. And the color is really nice with these beads. These are from Michael's Bead Gallery. I always go when they have their 50% off sales at Michael's. So what I did was I poured just a little bit of the resin into each cup. I let it sit for an hour, maybe even an hour and a half so that it got good and sticky because if you try to set these in it when the resin is fresh, it's so slippery in these silicone cups that they just slide all over the place and fall over and you come back and one submerged and yeah, it's a big mess. You don't get the look that you want. So let's pop, start here on this corner. They just pop right out. And I don't mind that it has this disc shape because I'll use my Dremel and I'll reduce that to whatever I want to do. I'm just going to pop those all out of the silicone tray there. They're about a quarter inch thick and we'll clean them up. Okay, I'm outside ready to start working on my little crystal points. And I've got all my tools safety first. I have my gloves. I have a good dust mask. I have goggles because the dust can get in your eyes. And I have my handy dandy Dremel hiding inside my sock filter that I use to protect my Dremel. And I'm going to set you guys up. We're going to be using, first I'm going to be using this cutting wheel. And if I need to, I can use my sanding drums to take off any sharp edges. But I want to clean all this up so that I can tuck these in closer to one another. And let's do it. I have on a dust mask and my gloves, and I'm being very, very careful to stay away from that cutting wheel. But you need to be careful with it. And then I'm just going to sand down those edges to round them over. And here we have a look of all the cuts and some pretty little crystals. Now that I have my crystals all ready to go, I'm just applying a tape dam in spots where my green is going to move up to the sides. So again, this is the sea green from Hippie Crafter, and it's a nice minty green color, matches these crystals perfectly. I'm just filling in one of the rings that's going to be that green color and using a pop stick to ensure it's all spread out. And then I put a puddle in where the crystals go and set them and we're done. So I let the resin set up for just about an hour and now I'm adding a couple more crystals and also sprinkling some crushed glass from Michael's. It's the next morning and everything from yesterday has cured. Now I'm applying a transparent, completely clear layer of the Hippie Crafter resin. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to sprinkle on some hexagon chunky glitter that I got from, again, from Michael's. It's a Recollections is the brand, and it's got a really nice green-blue shimmer to it. So I was just loading that up, and this piece is getting its bling on now. So now I'm going to be putting on some of the, this is, again, from Hippie Crafter. This is their Silk White. And in my tests, I found that this one was clumping. So I'm going to show you guys how I work on clumping. It's a powder, so you don't want it to clump. If it clumps and you pour your resin and you have clumps, then they kind of burst and doesn't look good. So let me put you in the uh, tripod and I'll show you what I'm going to do. First thing is safety. I'm putting on my respirator because this is a mica powder and I don't want to breathe it in. And I'm going to measure a little bit of the mica powder, put it into the cup. I want the white to be able to cover everything up, so I'm going pretty heavy on it. And then I'm going to start adding some 99% alcohol. And I'm just going to do a few drops at a time and I'm going to work it all in, moving it around. I'm going to actually create 
a fluid using the alcohol and blending the mica powder in. So I just do a few drops at a time and I blend and then I add a few more drops again. Sorry about the cup going a little bit off camera there. <laughs> it's hard when you're doing all this and you got the mask on, but you know, I try to film what I can. Anyway, it just keeps on blending in until it's nice and smooth and there's not going to be any clumping whatsoever. Now it's time to add the resin, so I'm just going to add a little bit, and I'm going to blend the two products together. Just slowly stir that in. I want to make sure, again, I'm looking carefully, looking for any clumps, and I'm not finding any. Now would be the time to break them up if I spotted any. And once I'm done with that stir, I'm just going to pour the rest of my resin in there, fill up my cup, and then a quick little stir. It looks so cool when it's swirling in through there. And the silk white is ready to get poured out onto the panel. Pretty. All right, so I'm going to be using this um, disposable plastic bottle. It's got a nice little point tip to it, so it gives me a lot of control to get that white in and around all these different elements that I have going on on the board. Now I'm trying to get in close to the blue. There's nothing worse than working on a piece and finding a gap in your resin. And the white on white can be a little bit hard to do. So <laughs> I'm taking my time filling in those spots and popping bubbles, looking for any debris that might drop in there, cleaning everything out, and then going around to the next ring where I'm gonna be having the white. Just going to blend that all through there, fill the zones up, and make sure that I use my popsicle stick to get good coverage. Everything's going to be filled in, and this pearl white has a really nice shimmer to it. Pop all those bubbles, and then right before I'm all set to put this thing to bed, I'm going to use a little mist bottle, and that's got the 99% alcohol. Now today I'm just going to do a couple of little tweaks. I'm pouring down another layer of clear resin, but it has a really extra fine glitter that matches that chunky gl glitter. So it's just going to add a little bit of a light sparkle over top of that, kind of diffuse those big chunks a little bit. So I'm being careful to move it around, get it exactly where I want it. If I find a spot that it overflows too much, I take a Q-tip and I push it back a little bit and pop those bubbles. And then I'm gonna work on the blue glass ring. It kinda got washed out by the white. So I batched up a little bit more resin, tinted it with Liquitex acrylic ink. It's the Phalocyan blue. Uh, I think it's the blue or the green shade. And that brings that blue right back up. Much happier with that. Okay, my fine friends. We are over at my studio table. And I am going to be adding the geode lines. So I, I know you guys see on your screen a lot of rainbowy looking hexes there. But that's not what I'm looking at when I look at it in person. It's, it's weird. Sometimes you just can't capture things on the camera the way they look in real life. So, everything's looking pretty good. Um, I had hoped that I would get a little bit, sorry about that glare, I was hoping to get a little bit more out of the glitter layer that I poured over top of that, but I did not. But that's okay. It's nice. And I'm very happy with bringing this back to the blue. That was kind of bumming me out. So this turned out really good. Like that. So now it's time to, like I said, we're going to add the geode lines. So these are the markers I'm going to use. This is a Posca. Um, there you go. Blue. Number 33. Azure. And this is, it's the medium tip. So depending on how you hold your pen, you can get a thick line or a thin line. Um, 
kind of tricky to get a thin line with these because pop the top off. Maybe I won't pop the top off. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I find that the Posca markers, because this is not oil-based, I don't even know what it is. It's got to be water-based. If it's not oil-based, it's water-based. So I find that these can actually rub off. That's a problem. So if somebody were to get this piece and went to clean it, you know, with a soft, dry, non-lint cloth, and they rubbed it too hard, this could actually rub off. So I will be doing a top coat over top of the lines. I find these are from Craft Smart. These are oil based and I like them because they don't rub off. <laughs> so this is a metallic green. I don't even know if they make this color anymore, but you can see it goes really well with that. So that's good. And this is a really nice bright silver that they have. So the Craft Smarts are from Michaels. I really enjoy using them. And you just need to shake them up good, and then you prime them, and you're good to go. So let's get drawing some lines. All right, we're off to the races with the pen, and don't you know, a blob of paint comes out. And I clean it up by using alcohol and a Q-tip, but you got to do it quickly. Then you can go right back to adding your lines. So the greens are lovely. The blue really is a perfect match to that blue. And then the silver gives a nice little different spark in there and will catch the light nicely. Did anybody notice that light was drifting into my picture frame? It was attacking me. Anyway, I, I took care of the light. It's not moving now. And I'm going to finish up drawing my lines in there. I'm just having fun, putting them wherever I feel like it. I've had no plan, but just going around and adding some of these details really makes a big difference when you're working on these geodes. They're a lot of fun to do. I hope you guys will try one. All right, we're back at the resin table. I've batched out a total of 22 ounces of the Hippie Crafter resin. And uh, you can see I also applied a tape dam all the way around. I still have my original tape blind on the sides because I want that clean white side. And I'm just going around making sure I get good coverage, filling in all the spots and popping the bubbles. And we're just gonna let it sit for a couple of hours and come back to remove the tape. Okay, it has been an hour and I have pulled off the tape dam and you can see a little bit of run over not a lot so what I want to do is I'm going to use my heat gun and I'm going to just warm up those end edges just a little bit to coax for a nice round edge you don't want to have your tape left too long because then it'll start to cure and you'll actually have a really like sharp edge. So after an hour, this is set up to the point where it's really thick and we're just gonna pull off, or we did pull off and I'm just gonna do a little bit of a round over. So you can even see some spots like right here you see that where it didn't really roll over? So by heating it up, it's going to roll over. All right, and we'll get a nice uniform edge. So let me turn on the heat gun. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is the end result. The Epoxy resin worked really well. It set up nicely. I had no issues whatsoever with it. The bubbles all popped easily and the mica pigments were dynamite. They really gave some nice results. I love all the colors that I used today. I loved them all when I made up my test batches, but check out how you got some nice details in the silk white 
the little bubbling effect when misted with alcohol is really terrific and the blue and the green are just dynamite. I have some coupon codes for you in the description box so head over there to check it out and I hope you give Hippie Crafter a try. Thanks for watching.